Hi and welcome to episode 5 of Click Team Fusion Tutorial. So, we are understood arrays, well we sort of understood arrays, and today we're going to use them to create the level. Exciting? I'm nervous. Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin, welcome to episode 5. So, as I said, I'm a little bit nervous because normally when I do this I make mistakes, and as you know, I do all these videos live, so if I make mistakes, you'll see them and hopefully you'll learn from them. So we're going to delve straight into it. We've created the array. Uh, so if I have a look on the screen, this is a level that we created uh, in episode 4. And if I move across to the array that we created. So we just put the number 10 in each of these boxes. So I don't necessarily want the number 10, that was just a test. So I'm going to come back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, so edit, I'm going to create the number one. So just don't change anything else. So I right clicked on that and clicked edit and then I just changed that to a one. Okay, now I'm going to run this and I'm just going to press spacebar which will create the array. Hopefully. Now let's go back to the array editor which we downloaded in the last one. I don't, it doesn't matter if you use a different one, this one's just easier to see all of the grid. I think it was made quite a long time ago, so, so we're in episode 5 now, hopefully it's created it here. Ah, for some reason the one it had selected is still selected, okay, so they're all ones. Now I'm going to use one uh, to signify the C tiles. Okay, and I'm just going to put zero in all the other tiles. This is when it gets boring because I can't. Can I use tab? No, I can't use tab. Oh, I have to do this by hand. Oh, so boring, so boring. <laughs> I think this, the quicker we have a proper level editor, better. So zero is going to be land, one is going to be C. So we might want some interesting C tiles there. Alright, I think that's going to be enough. Okay, so we've got a C down here, and actually most of it's C, because I can't be bothered to go through them all. So I'm going to save that at episode 5. Let's save it in there. Okay, now let's click off that. Now we've got an array now, so instead of creating the array, or writing to the array, and then saving it, we don't want to do that anymore. So I'm going to delete that by clicking there and just pressing the delete button on the, on the keyboard. Uh, I'm not writing values anymore, so I can get rid of that. So let's go back to the frame editor and I can show you why I've put ones and zeros. So if I double click on our tile, you can see that this is direction zero for land and direction one for sea. Now we put ones in all of them. So they're all C by default, and then I change some of them to zero to make them land. This is this is the fascinating thing about the directions is they do have numbers attached to them. We'll see how we use them now. So let's click on Event Editor. Now this is really useful um, loop here because this goes through each of the tiles, which is what we want. However, we need to find we've created it and it's put in the same, we've created the tile and we've put it in a specific position, but at the moment it's set direction to random, well, we don't want that. We want to load the array before this loop happens and then set the direction to whatever the array tells it it needs to be. So I'm going to be lazy here, I'm going to click and drag this start of frame um, event down to the bottom, down to new condition, but I want it to load the array first, so I'm going to drag this back up and put it up here. Now I could have done that by clicking the two and pressing Ctrl and C for copy, then Ctrl and V for paste, and just removing its contents, that would have been just as fine. I'm going to delete that. And it's all about efficiency with coding, because you're normally doing things a thousand million times, so the quicker you can do them, the better. 
And when I'm at full flow, I'm just dragging these. I mean, you wouldn't be able to necessarily follow if this is your first time you've done this. So I'll do it nice and slowly and show you. Okay, so start a frame before this thing happens. I want to right click and I want file. This time I want to load array from the file. Now, like before, we're not necessarily going to all have the same file structure. So I'm going to use an expression. Again, just the same as before. I'm going to go to uh, file names and this beautiful application path name. Okay, that's where they've um, got the exe file, they being whoever's using your game. And I'm going to say array.r. Okay, it's exactly the same as when we saved the array. Click OK. I probably shouldn't have deleted that, but I just copied it across. But anyway, so it's loaded the array. Then it's starting to create the tiles. Now, one way I could have done this, and that this would have been fine. Okay, and actually, I'll, I'll say this now, because this is quite an interesting point. I'm just going to get rid of that, actually. That's, that's the way I would normally do it, because it's easier to read, that we're doing this and then this. Okay, but if I didn't want to do it that way, if I want to do it all in the same line, how do I know whether it's going to do the loop or the loading the array first? Click Team Fusion's thought of this, and it has a, th a fourth screen, or fifth screen, fourth screen, there we go, if I double click on one of these, then this shows me which order they're doing them in. So it's doing the loop and then it's loading the array. We don't want that. So all you do is click and drag it up and say, no, I want you to load the array first and then start the loop because we're going to use the array in the loop. Confused? Well, maybe. <laughs> Let's go back to event list editor. So that's a way you could have done it. Okay. Or as I showed you, just simply do it on the top line and click team will always start from the top and work their way downwards normally if you've started a loop then if the loops down here it might do that first and sometimes you can get in a few problems with the order it does stuff it is logical it is a computer all calculators always give the same answer for the same calculation it's just trying to follow the logic sometimes of what event happens first but generally at the top, work your way down. Okay, that's quite a high, high level uh, um, bit of uh, understanding there. So there we are, just put that in there. So the bit I want to change is the edit uh, on this bit where it sets the direction to random. And that sounds good at the moment, but actually we've said that we don't want a randomized map, we want the map the arrays t array tells us to. So instead of setting it to a random number, I right click on the array. Now, again, we look at the value or the string. Well, our array is a value array. So I'm going to read from the x, y, z position. And again, we're only using the x and the y because everything's stored in that first z position. But again, later on, we might want to use the z position. So I'm going to click on that. So enter the x offset. Okay. I'm going to want to do the fast loop. So where are we? Fast loop for create tile x. Don't forget to close the speech mark. Okay, many a time I've tried to figure out why it's a syntax error. Then the y position, the y set, we want the same thing but y. So this will go from zero to how many tiles we have, minus one, because it starts at zero, don't forget. This will start at zero and then go to how many Y tiles we have. Now the Z at the moment, we've just used zero because it's all stored in that zero. Click OK. Theoretically, this should work. <laughs> this is the bit now that I am actually nervous at. I have no idea whether this will work, so let's have a look and see whether it will. Run application, and it actually works. Look at that. So all of those were C tiles, which we wanted, and all of those are land tiles. Now don't forget when you do this that actually we probably want to move on to another level or move on to another frame if I go below this. So you don't want to block the person off with C tiles. But I am absolutely amazed 
that that has managed to work. There you go. And so we can create the level. If we go back to it, let's close that down. Now go back to this, and let's let's do a C. C for my first name. We'll do a C in the C. So if I go File, Save. Theoretically, there's our C, eh? How good is that? Now, not only can we just create the one array file, we can create an array file for every level. And so when I go to the bottom here, I can keep it on the same frame, but just load a different array. Get rid of all the tiles, start again, doo -doo 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 -doo, but I don't need to have a frame for every level. I can just have one frame. The downside of this, clearly, is looking at this thing here. Ooh, my hand just doesn't suddenly disappear off the screen. Looking at this thing here, that's not the nicest thing in the world to look at. Also, if we have hundreds of different tiles, then, well, there's only 32 directions that it can face in. So how do we deal with that? Well, again, this is maybe something the Z-Index can help us with. Maybe we have a Z-Index telling us, right, okay, which tile we're we using. We could have 10 different tiles making up 320 different directions in total. So which tile are we loading and then which direction is it facing? In? So there's a whole scope here with that Z index, which a lot of people ignore because they're a bit scared of it. it sounds scary, three dimensions. Okay, but it's just storing more data within each tile. Each tile, there's the X and, uh, the X and the Y are just saying which tile they're in. We can't store any more data than that. But then the Z, we can create a whole load of powerful um, data for it. Now, some of you, I'm sure, when you looked at my last video, thought, well, what if I want to store text in it? Why don't we just have the string for all of them? The reason, historically, is because when you want to do maths on an array, and you normally do, then when you use strings it won't do the maths on it so say if you wanted to order them by size or something like that or more powerful things like finding the average in, in an array or, or whatever then it won't be able to do that with a string as well because with a string it stores a huge amount of chunk for each array part but for a, a value array it stores very little anyway Basically, unless you're making some sort of massive game or you're doing a lot of data in an array, it probably doesn't matter. Probably doesn't matter. Um, but if I know that I won't be using strings at all, which I knew for this one I wouldn't because they're all numbers, then there's no point in using a string array. It does add a little bit more complexity to it, especially as you have to then convert, say that fast loop, I'd need to convert it to a string first. So if you were inclined to do it that way, I'll show you how to do that very quickly. Uh, so if I wanted, I'm just going to create another condition down here just to show you. Uh, so if I wanted to write a string to x, y, z, I might say hi, but then I wanted to put, oh, no I don't. Say if I wanted to put the fast loop index of create tile array, uh, create tile x, so similar to what we did before, you can see it doesn't like it at all. Even if I get out of there, it doesn't like it. If you ever need to store a, a value as a string, I'm just going to press Control and X to get rid of that. You have to change it to a string. So you have to do this first. This changes any value. Okay, so say if we have the value 9, it changes it to a string. That will change it to this. Okay, so it will treat it as text. So if I just had the value of 9, it really doesn't like it. It needs a text expression. Anyway, we will probably be encountering that later on. Okay, but there's quite a lot of stuff in these two episodes. Quite a lot of higher level stuff in these two episodes. The stuff I am so glad that I know about now, because the old way of doing it that I've done was horrendous. 
I'm looking at doing a different way of moving the character uh, in the next episode, unless I change my mind by the time I do it. But I think that's the next logical step on our <laughs> eventual um, uh, point at which we release something that looks like an RPG. It is kind of getting there. It is kind of getting there, if you look at it. It is, it is closer. It's, it's closer. It's not quite there yet. There's some really big things we still have yet to cover. Thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, please click subscribe. If you also liked it, please click like. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.